I'm Nancy Strinisty. I'm the director of East Coast Programs for Green Schoolyards America. And I'm filling in today for our CEO and founder, Sharon Danks. And I'm uh, helping Lauren McKenna, the program manager from Green Schoolyards America, who runs everything about the community of practice behind the scenes for us. Our agenda today, we're going to be hearing a field report from Kenmore Middle School in Arlington, Virginia, which happens to be where I'm located. So I'm very excited about this presentation. And then our breakout groups, small groups are going to be organized by professional roles. So we'll give you some more instructions about that later, but you'll have the opportunity to choose a group of colleagues in similar professional roles to talk with today. You're at the Community of Practice, which is designed for school and district administrators and their partners, but open to anyone who's interested. We meet, um, if you haven't been here before, every other Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Most of our sessions include a school or a district speaker sharing their work and their time for, and time for small group networking discussions. Many of our presentations are recorded and available on our website. And our plan is to meet through 2021 and beyond. Our next meeting is on Tuesday, November 9th, where we will hear from Vanessa Luhan and Sarah Pedamonte of the Lawrence Hall of Science and their work on outdoor learning. And for those of you who aren't familiar with what the National Outdoor Learning Initiative is and what we've been doing, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of our mission and our vision. Uh, we support schools and districts around the country in their efforts to hold school on site safely and equitably by using outdoor spaces as strategic cost-effective solutions to increase capacity and provide access to abundant fresh air. We think that outdoor learning improves outcomes for, for learning and for mental and physical health and for children's happiness. Our efforts have begun by responding to the, to the COVID crisis, but we are also here to help schools make investments that can be used long-term and that can add resilience to the preschool through grade 12 education system. Our National Outdoor Learning Library is something that we've been working on since early in the pandemic. It includes practical resources for moving school outside during the pandemic and beyond. It's a free online library that is organized into six main chapters. It has over 150 tools and articles and templates and all kinds of resources. We're working, still working on the new table of contents, but I promise that it's coming soon, as well as some other navigation systems. And it's an ongoing effort. We see this as a long-term project and resources will continue to be added. Um, I think we've told you before about the augmented reality application, but it's now also available as an app in the app store for iPad and iPhone. It's just the coolest thing. It allows you to take pictures of your school grounds or other spaces and then adds in the outdoor seating and other arrangements that you envision into the picture in scale. The new app updates pre the previous version that's available via web browser, which is linked on our website in the library. And, and there's some more details on the screen. Here are some sample images of what you can do with the app. Take a picture and then add in the seating. And now you can even add the shelter and the seating in the same picture. That's a new advance. And here are some more, and, and Lauren will put the link to where you can download the app for your iPhone in the App Store. We're working and really close to launching a new case study page that should be online later this week. It's a map, an interactive map of the U.S. 
that shows examples from around the country. And we now have examples of outdoor learning programs in all 50 states. <clears throat> and then from that map, you can link to our new case study page that has um, both written case studies and recorded videos that tell the stories, the really inspiring, compelling stories of what's been happening across the country. Also coming hopefully later this week is our new district pathway that leads, leads school districts through our National Outdoor Learning Library. It includes key steps for districts to consider when they're moving learning outdoors and starting district-wide programs. There are links to relevant articles in the National Outdoor Learning Library. There are also links to inspiring case studies from other districts that demonstrate what can be done. And finally, there are links to time-saving tools and templates created by other districts so that as your district starts an outdoor learning program, you don't have to reinvent everything. We're trying to pull together resources that you can use so that you can dive in quickly. Our National Outdoor Learning Survey, which we're calling our virtual listening tour, is our way to understand more about the experiences that individuals and organizations are having across the country, taking learning outside during COVID, we hope that the results will elevate, inform, and inspire others about outdoor learning. We hope that you will participate. There's a link um, in the chat and also at the top of our website. The survey will be open for um, not quite another week. Um, so please help us by filling out the survey and by sharing it widely because the more people who contribute, the more accurate this picture will be. And now I'll turn it over to Lauren. All right, so now we will hear from our speakers from Arlington Public Schools, David McBride, Michelle Hubert, and Yurith Bowen. Just as an introduction, they're, you know, they're coming from Arlington, Virginia, so our East Coast friends. Say hi to our West Coast and everyone in between. Mr. David McBride is in his sixth year serving as principal of Kenmore Middle School in Arlington. Kenmore serves a div diverse student population of over 950 sixth through eighth graders and is known for its arts and technology focus, as well as its emphasis on inclusion. Under Mr. McBride's leadership, the school's focus program was aligned to STEAM principals and the facility was enhanced to support coursework in science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics. The school is comprised of over 50% English language learners and over 20% students with disabilities. It is known for innovative approaches to education, for example, planning for outdoor learning and lunches during the start of the COVID closure. Another hallmark of the school is active community engagement across a broad range of stakeholders. Mr. McBride has served as a classroom teacher, teacher specialist, specialist and administrator in the Arlington County Public Schools for over 30 years. He currently sits on the Superintendent's Advisory Committee for Immigrant and Refugee Concerns, as well as the Transportation Committee. A lifelong resident of Arlington County, Mr. McBride's wife and two adult children currently work in education. He is a graduate of the University of Virginia, George Mason University, and James Madison University, and currently works over just over a mile from where he grew up. Our other guest speaker, Yurith Bowen, is in her ninth year at Kenmore Middle School and serves as the functional life skills lead teacher. As a child growing up in Jamaica, Yurith is very familiar with planting and growing vegetables, herbs, and flowers in their family garden and was ec ecstatic when Principal McBride gave her team the opportunity to create a garden at Kenmore. Being a teacher of special population students, including autism, intellectual disabilities, and others, it was important for their program to create an environment outside of the classroom that would assist students in the development of the five senses. Creating the outdoor learning classroom was the perfect avenue to bring learning alive for the students. Using the outdoors, it allows 
their program to use nature to teach across the curriculum and allow students to be practical, responsible, and productive members of the school community. Yurith was born in Jamaica, West Indies, and migrated to the United States during her high school years. She is a graduate of Florida A&M University in Tallahassee and Cambridge College in Cambridge, Massachusetts. She is the mother of one adopted daughter and currently serving as a foster parent. Our third guest speaker is one of her colleagues, Dr. Michelle Hubert, um, who works on the team with her. And without further ado, thank you so much, David, Yurith, and Michelle. We are so, we're so excited to have you here to be talking about Arlington Public Schools, Outdoor Meals, and your um, special education program. Welcome. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Nancy. So I'm going to share, uh, walk through what we've experienced here at Kenmore. I'm, I'm amazed you all have been meeting 38 meetings. feel like I'm late to the party. And we're trying to keep up as we've all come through the pandemic and trying to keep ourselves focused on learning and positive outcomes for our students. Kenmore is, is unique. I mean, every school feels like it's unique. We have a very special population uh, and we want to do best that we can possibly do for our students and for our staff. And early on, we knew with COVID that it was going to be safer to be outside. So we had parent leaders, PTA, community leaders come in and try to support us. So I'm going to walk through this process. Of, and I think that we're probably early adopters. Because we really need to move into like the content learning outside. And the next part of our story would be professional learning so that we have more folks who are using the outdoor spaces. But I'm just going to walk through uh, the story thus far, and then Ms. Bowen is going to talk about uh, specific practices for students with disabilities. So our, our theme was how to survive a global pandemic by going outside. So we know that outdoor activities are safer and fun. We've seen, probably like other schools, um, some social and emotional challenges with students coming back into school and their behavior. We were seeing behavior that was more typical toward the end of the year, right from the start. And so we've had to really work with our social emotional learning side um, and try to remind our, our, our staff and students that we're all in this together. Uh, and once we got into some of the outdoor activities, you can see that the, the atmosphere in the building started to relax. We did a great job with our cheer squad and our soccer, soccer team. Coming out of level one and level three, I'm putting this in for context. So we went from having 25% capacity, like 250 students, two days a week uh, flip-flopping, uh, in the hybrid model to almost a thousand students. And I put in the picture of our first student who came back in level three, because those students were very brave. We all were tense about how the, the infection rate was gonna go. We had a lot of infection along our zip code uh, in our neighborhood. And so I just applauded the students coming back in for level three. But level one had been going on since November when uh, Ms. Bowen and Dr. Hubert's students, the most vulnerable students had been in since the, since the fall. And that was fairly successful, but we knew if we're going to have a thousand kids back in the building, that we're going to have to make some changes. We're going to have to use the outdoor space because it seemed like the anxiety level, you know, feeling comfortable when you're outside increased because we knew from the science and the research, at least that I had seen, that there was really minimal risk when you're outside. And Arlington had, had, had changed mass expectations for that when you're outside, you could uh, drop your mask for different activities. So if we could get classroom learning going on outside, even more the better. This picture is from one of our family and consumer science classes who went outside for a tasting event after they made, I think they made milkshakes or something. We got a lot of help in this process. Green Schoolyards America definitely uh, helped us. We had a partnership with the University of Pennsylvania, an architecture firm, had a key parent, Amory Douglas, uh, who was really pushing forward, helping us with outdoor learning. Uh, our PTA president was also a champion and trying to get us some funding. We had help from the local Boy Scout troop and also APS facilities. Early on in level one, getting ready for level three, we got picnic tables. They just appeared. There wasn't school funding. It wasn't even really done through the PTA. It was a neighborhood sign up. Uh, we got like 10, 12 picnic tables. We're skeptical at first about how we're going to use them, but they were very helpful and they continue to be very helpful. And I'll, at the end, I'll show you the picture of <laughs> how the area looks now. But we did a site study. We identified four areas plus 
uh, the cafeteria courtyard, and we're able to get area one and four set up for outdoor learning. And, and in the beginning, it was just stumps. This week, we've actually got benches set up. So there, there are two places at the front of the building where you can come and gather. It's used every day during arrival and dismissal because for social distancing, we could not have everybody coming into the building unsupervised in the morning. So we have delayed when we can open um, to our students. Uh, and so we probably have 20 to 40 students waiting outside. Uh, we serve a very hardworking community. A lot of them have to go out early um, to get jobs. So having a safe place to sit and gather uh, has been great. We use stumps, it's just little seating places. Our PTA also looked at purchasing yoga mats and sit upons so they could, uh, students could spread out. This is a, a group of students who were just waiting after school to get picked up and we're using some of the seating areas. Now the upgrade that we just got, table benches provided by local Boy Scout troop for his Eagle project. And you can do more like learning circles with, with this format. Why is it important? It's just more fun to be outside. <laughs> you got to take advantage of, of the together time. And again, your anxiety is reduced with a risk of infection as we're, you know, as we're, we're, we safely gather outside. So special programs, this is a picture of special programs. They use those spaces. Their classrooms actually behind the umbrella uh, and they can come out for gardening and for other activities. The other space, I think it was number four, we added picnic benches right in front of the admin uh, offices and other classes can use that space. So like I mentioned earlier, level three, we had about 250 students coming in two different shifts for two days. Now we have about uh, 950 to 980 students coming in for five days. And we really had to think about how to do outdoor lunch. So we've added the cafeteria. We've had a black box theater. We also have space in the library. And it spread everybody out. Anecdotally, kids that are outside, they love being outside. It's a little, little much sometimes with behavior, but exactly. they and really enjoy it. And it, it helped us. Building, um, you'll see that there are some barrels we've got, around. We've got an ounce and what's going on. Drive. This is a very long okay. tradition at Ken. We so appreciate our presenters coming to us live from the middle of their school day. We totally understand. Thank you so much. So we're doing, we're doing the, they're announcing for the food drive, um, but I'll just click through. Okay, so real quick, and then uh, Yurith and uh, Michelle can talk about that, the learning practices for special programs. We got uh, shade structures put in, PTA went out, they did us, they basically they studied the site with us and we picked two places and they funded it, which was great. And then, okay, so this is the after picture. So you may have noticed that nice picture in the beginning where everybody was spread out. Now we're in the heavy use. So this is a picture from today. We've added more picnic uh, tables. We need to get, I saw some AstroTurf pictures. I think we're gonna need to get some AstroTurf or some other ground covering that'll be more durable. I also think that we could probably use three more of those umbrellas to cover that whole area. I feel like we're on our way that we've had a good you know, initial start to outdoor learning. But like I said earlier, we want to explore more about the professional learning to train teachers. We have our EL classes, we're going out. Some of our elective classes, we're going out. Special programs are going out. But we felt we could probably ex expand this opportunity. And now Ms. Bowen and um, Dr. Huber are going to talk about their work in the garden. I'm going to try to sneak Dr. Hubert in here. That's her right there that don't want to be seen. <laughs> but thank you for having us. Our outdoor space had a specific reason for creating that space. We work with functional life skill students and we basically prepare them for life outside of the classroom. So one of the things that we do is a lot of cooking. So we wanted to create an environment where the kids can really know the food that they're eating. When we cook, where does your food come from? How do we create those foods? And that's how we went about creating the garden. And so in the garden, we have a host of herbs and spices and tomatoes and peppers, all the things that um, the kids usually eat. So that's how we went about creating our garden. We have families who come in and help create the garden with us when we begin to plant the 
moms or dads always come in and the kids have their own plant that they will plant and say, this is my tomato tree. So they'll plant the tree and they'll actually go out and we'll use math to measure and they'll see how it's growing throughout the, throughout the season. And then we also have parents come in on the weekends and they could just go to the garden and pick what they want and take home. The kids go to the garden throughout the day when everything is ready to be harvested. And they pick stuff and they take it home with them. So that's how our environment got created. And also just for sensory, just for the kids that we work with, you know, just that we had, we use it for a lot of sensory things that we need to do with them. We use it for the five senses, you know, they, they get to taste them, you know, they get to touch them. And so they get to smell them. A lot of our herbs have, you know, nice smells. So the kids get to smell them and, and all that good stuff. So I'll let Michelle um, add some things to that. <laughs> also, one of the things that we do is the outdoor learning. So one of the big things is understanding where our food comes from. So I work with the science of all of the, the gardening. So for here, we show how our students are taking care of it. And we work with photosynthesis, the stages of the plant, we also look at the insects that are helpful to the plant, the monarch butterfly, aphids, and the, the bugs that eat the aphids. So there's lots of different parts of the outdoor learning that we do here. Oh, so this is, this is when we first started the garden. So we actually, the kids come out and they help build the garden with us. So this is where you're watching the kids build in the garden with us. You're watching them helping to plant what goes in the garden. And then the one over here with Mr. McBride, you're watching them. And down at the lower bottom where the hose is, you're watching them water in the garden. So we actually go out in the garden and water the garden, pick the weeds from around it. So they learn how to take care of the garden. The upper top right there, that's Dr. Hubert doing her thing. Okay, here's <laughs> uh, Mr. McBride uh, switched off. That's okay. But this is... This is a parent that comes in on the, she came in on the weekend and she watered the garden and they can just pick whatever they want. As you can see, they're picking the basil and then they went home and we had a basil recipe of how to make basil because we actually did that in the classroom with the students and they took the recipe home. So mom came back, mom loved it. She came back, she picked some basil and then they went home and followed the recipe and made pesto. So that's really neat when we are able to teach the kids at school using the garden and have them actually going home and then teach their parents or go through a recipe with their parents and actually make something that's coming from the garden. And I think that's one of the most fulfilling part of the outdoor learning that we enjoy in our program. And those are just some of the amazing things that we plan in our, in our garden each year. We get better and we get more space from Mr. McBride and we plant more things. So if you see that little bag right there, that's when the kids go out and they could just go out and pick whatever they want to take home. And a lot of times parents would send us an email or get us a text or a phone call to say, thank you for sending home the peppers. Thank you for sending home the tomatoes. And then the kids will come back. Sometimes they'll take pictures of what they make at home and they'll come back and and show us and tell us what they made with the things that they that they took home. Oh, this is our latest. So this is sweet potatoes and this is this was our first year that we planted sweet potatoes and we were shocked to see how many sweet potatoes we had from how many seeds did we put down? Uh, six plants. Like six plants. And we have a host of sweet potatoes. So this on this Friday, the kids are actually going to use the sweet potatoes to make sweet potato muffins. So we've been making, we've been working on making muffins um, this month. And so they have made um, blueberry muffins. They have made apple muffins. Um, chocolate chip muffins. And then this Friday, they're actually going to use the sweet potato to make the sweet potato muffins. Thanks, Ms. Bowen. Thanks, Dr. Hubert. They've done a great job of actually implementing curriculum with outdoor learning with um, some of our most vulnerable students. Uh, and they have, they have the best class. I mean, their classes are amazing uh, because they do interactive, meaningful learning activities in community 
and they use the outdoor resources, they use the parent resources um, for purposeful learning, uh, despite uh, uh, learning challenges from, from some pretty profound disabilities. So it's really a model for the school. Um, we also had outdoor seating added just real quick because we are a COVID-19 testing site. So we work with the county to provide uh, more seating just for the public so they can get their testing. But I can just say, in wrapping up, it's really helped transform our school. I, I, we're a work in progress. Obviously, I'd like to see more done with the, the, the core classes and getting our, more of our students outside and learning for, for, for you know, meaningful purposes. But having a nice facility and having the welcoming atmosphere has, has helped us relax a lot because when COVID was not easy, right? It wasn't easy for anybody, especially if you're working in schools and even now you're still feeling the fallout of it. But to communicate that we have a plan and we're thinking ahead, it's like it's going to be okay. We've added this outdoor seating. We've taken advantage of, of parents who have different perspectives about coming back to school, right? We had some parents who, you know, some neighborhoods that were incredibly hit. I mean, we we had families that were hit hard by this. And then others who just want, you know, who wanted to just, you know, restart immediately. So having outdoor learning, having a plan, partnering, partnering with community leaders was a big help for us. Um, so it's just a thrill, Nancy, to hear that there's so many other schools around the nation, around the world that are looking at this, because if you think about the purpose of education, and as we move, as we're in the 21st century, you know, I'm kind of old now, but you think about what is a modern 21st century school, schools should be for communities and communities new, do need to go outside and, and, and be connected. And it's been a big help for us during the whole pandemic. And that's our story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave and and the Earth and the whole team. We we really love we really appreciate that. And Anne Marie is here. I see in the comments. Anne Marie is is a mom and an activist in our community for outdoor learning, and she's been a huge so help with Kenmore and and helping them to acquire all the infrastructure for outdoor learning. It's so wonderful to hear oh, are they about the work you guys are doing. Does anyone have any questions for the Kenmore team? Um, we do have one question from the chat. One moment, uh, from Karen. How did you communicate to parents or educate them about, uh, educate them to know that outdoor eating is essential during these times? Oh, we got a little help from the county because uh, there was an advocacy group and, and that, was a, that was a health issue because we knew being outside was a lot more safe. So the county put out a plan, but to advocate, you know, to talk about us for a little bit, we already had a plan in the summer. We knew that if we're going to have a thousand kids back in the building, we need to be able to get them outside, those who wanted to. And while it would be impossible to socially distance in our cafeteria, we could open up other spaces. So we communicated that through school talks, emails, um, the welcome back letter, um, and basically guaranteeing that if your child really wanted to go outside, they would be able to go outside. And that, that the other thing I could say anecdotally is we haven't seen, knock on wood, um, any significant community spread. So just from the first quarter monitoring COVID, we do, we have had students more in the sixth grade because they're not vaccinated that have tested positive, I would say around 10 or so, but we're not seeing the whole class have to, to go out and we're not seeing other students who are close contacts come back with, with test positive. We have great ventilation. I should show you the main hallway. We have a lot of airspace in our school, a lot of natural lights. And I think that, you know, as part of it. And we're sitting in 22204. And if, you know, if you know Arlington, that corridor along Columbia Pike has a lot or has had a lot of COVID. So um, we feel like we have a safe building. And, you know, short answer, we messaged, we emailed, did videos, um, and basically guaranteed that if your child wanted to eat outside, they could. I see another question here from Cass Kincaid. Have you found that other teachers have become more interested and in including outdoor learning as a permanent part of curriculum in the future. Interestingly, we saw EL teachers and science teachers. Well, science teachers have kind of made a connection, right, with nature going outside. And when we could do field trips, we had great field trips. The Smithsonian uh, had a nice institute on the Chesapeake Bay. 
outdoor lab. Arlington's always had an outdoor lab we could go to, but we can't do field trips right now. So I'm hoping more, it's like if you build it, they will come. More classes will go outside. In, in level three, when we were in hybrid, it was a little easier because you only had about a quarter of your class to go out. So part of the story with American education is funding for not only just the facility and being able to be set up to be outside, but also the staffing, how we staff schools, what is reasonable for a teacher to have for a, for a class size. And then I do think about like, what are our best practices for, for teaching outside and how we set up teachers to, to do a better job of that. Science teachers tend to be a little bit more connected to it because they'll want to do lab work. And of course, PE, you know, PE is usually outside, you know, as much as possible, so. And just to piggyback on Mr. McBride, I know a lot of science, science teachers have asked us, can they utilize what we've had in the garden? So they've taken their kids outside and they've utilized what we've had in the garden to help um, with their science curriculum as well. So we have not just our population that's using it, but it's really open to the whole school and other kids can just go by. I've seen kids gone by and pull out a carrot and just stand right there and eat the carrot or pick up a tomato and stood right there and, and ate the tomato. So it's just open for the whole school. And it's nice to see um, the students and teachers um, just really engage in what we have started outside. And it's a, it's a beautiful time to, because it gets your thought off of yourself. You're, you reconnect with nature. You know, the element of food is very common. Everybody wants to eat. And I would love to see it as a permanent part of, I mean, I think that, that students would be more, more responsible just with food in general when they see the effort that goes into how you produce it and, the, and just the amazing you know, part of nature to, to produce it. It's very calming and it is, I've seen it after school, you know, you have random, you know, people in the public will walk by, they'll stop, they'll admire it. Um, and you get a good feeling connected to the school. I would definitely try to put a garden or some type of natural element in these, any school out, you know, I, I work at, because I think that it's a universal space and it makes it nicer for everybody. So you have less anxiety when you associate with school. Absolutely. It's also nice to see, like when we come out on weekends to water, we have a track and there are people that's just walking around the track. Some of them are not actually parents and they'll come up and ask, you know, how can I help? And we actually have a sign up and we eventually put something out that has the hose and the, um, the key to turn the water on. So if we are not able to come down, we have parents or just community members who knows where those things are and they could just go out and water the plant. So it was nice also to see how involved the community got with, you know, with what we were doing. That's really Great. beautiful. Build it and they will come, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I think Lauren put a link to, um, to a case study that, um, that we wrote er earlier in the year, last spring, about five or six Arlington schools, including Kenmore, when they were doing their first doing their outdoor lunch. So if anyone wants to take a look at that, it gives a little more idea of what's happening in, in our school district. So thank you both for, that was a wonderful presentation. And as an Arlington resident, I just loved hearing from you. Um, sure. I, I was going to ask if we had time for one more question. Oh, sure. Um, Go for it. And so I, I just wanted to ask, um, so Teresa Weed, and this is a good way to round out the conversation, you know, what parts, this is maybe for David and the rest of the team, what parts of the school they did in fact work best outside and have learning outcomes been affected? And how do you plan to use these spaces? Beyond COVID. So we don't have a lot of good data as far as well, I would want to have two elements, really the academic and also the behavioral side. And we just don't have a lot of data right now to be able to say that this this made a you know obvious change in either of those. But I can say the general feeling is that we have a welcoming environment. And we are, we are planning for success for students and we want to include our community. And I think the garden kind of symbolizes that, you know, and having the outdoor seating symbolizes that and getting a lot of help from our parents. Um, but the, the plan would be, you know, to get 
teachers to use the outdoor spaces for social emotional learning to do more of the circles, um, that process of trying to, you know, communicate in a circle and in, in rapport with each other, um, and then connect it to content learning. Um, I mean, there's a lot of, you could do with English, with reading, obviously, science and math, but to try to open up that space. Because I will say this, we, we are pretty, every school is unique, but we feel like we're pretty unique because our population is, is super diverse. And we have students with entitlement issues and privilege and all that. And we have students who just arrived here who are happy that they have school by cars to go to. So having a shared outdoor space that people can learn in and, and learn from each other is, is, is really important. So we want to try to get that, get that going and make the focus on growth and not some of the drudgery of being in an institution, being in a school, but something that's exciting and seeing a monarch butterfly develop is kind of exciting. Seeing something you plant actually grow and you can eat it. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of exciting. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, David, Yureth, and Michelle.